Good morning guys, we're going to be putting some new lighting on the Hummer H2, so let's jump on computer, let's find some lights and let's get going. We've got a few parcels here, purchased these for the Hummer H2, after the off-roading we did last weekend we've broken a couple of bits on it, so let's fix her up. Let's find something to open it. I'm not sure that's going to work. Ooh, scissors. No. How about this? That'll do job. We got some more parcels, guys. Woohoo! Good morning, guys. Today we're going to be fitting some lights to the back of the H2 for reversing purposes. This bracket here fits on the back there. That just bolts on. Simple fit. Let's get this off and let's get going. Once this nut is off and it's pulled out, I should be able to slide the rear sleeve straight out the back. There we go. Simples. It's not such a simple fit after all. This factory part, what's meant to fit and just bolt on, doesn't quite fit. This is gonna require a bit of fabrication work just to get it to fit. Let's give this a go, see how this fits. Oh, we're getting there, that's not too bad, a bit more. Pick grinder back up, let's crack on. Let's try it now. Ah, we're getting there, that's not too bad. A little bit more. As you can see, the bracket's now installed, the sleeve's back in, it's bolted up. I'm now attaching the lights. I know the bumper's got a bit of rust on it then, the tailpipe's a bit bent. We're going to be working on that in the next video, so watch out for that one. I now need to remove the rear light protector and the light itself to gain access to the cables behind. I'm going to tap into the reverse light to give power to the two lights I've just installed. That way, when I'm backing up, I can actually see behind me now because before the lights were crap. It looks like we've got plenty of space, there's plenty of holes to drop a cable through. Let's grab some cable, let's start running it. I fed the cable down through the body underneath. I'm now just pushing it up through the back of the sleeve towards the back of the lights. That way it's all hidden, you won't be able to see it from underneath. And that's what we want. I like to use heat shrink on all my cabling. I'll put a single piece on each positive and negative cable. Then I'll put one solid piece off of both cables together. That'll hold everything nice and tight. I'm going to use push connectors for these lights because I want to be able to take them off again at a later date. When it comes to removing the bumper, I'm just going to pull all the excess cable up through the chassis now. And then I'm going to feed it under the bottom trim. I'm going to feed it up through the side trim. And then down into it back at light. Now we're just going to prep all the cables. Snip these two on the back of the reverse light. We're going to put connectors on the back of those. So I can easily disconnect when I need to. The engine's now running. I'm testing my lights. There we go. That's in reverse. Lights are on, off. And again, in reverse, the lights are on. A few months back now, I snapped a bonnet cable. What stops the bonnet lifting too far and bending the hinges. So I've bought some high tensile strength 3 mil cable. I'm just going to feed it through, loop it a couple of times. Crimp it. Job's done. Good as new. I've now removed part of the dashboard. I've marked where I want the toggle switch for all the lighting to be. And I'm now just going to cut that out with a Dremel Multi. Using the Dremel makes it effortless. Really simple to do. 
I'm using a small 30 mil blade just so I can get the cut as accurate as possible. Trim a little bit off of the back just to allow it to push in. There we go guys, simple as that, on, off, on, off. I'm now going to feed part of the wiring harness through the firewall, through the back of the engine bay, around the back of the battery box, and that's where it's going to connect up. Bit of a tight squeeze under there, but we managed it, we've got it through. Now I just need to feed it up the back of the steering column and pull it out through the top, and that's where I'm going to connect up my switch. I'm struggling to feed it up the back, so I'm going to go from the top. I just need to pull out a couple of these little boxes, get my arm in the back, and I should be able to reach it. There we go, done. I'm ready to connect it up to the back of the switch. Let's put it all back together. I've just got a couple of cables rigged up here to this LED here. This is just a test if it's going to work. Let's go to the switch. Let's flick the switch on. Let's go back. Yep, that works nicely. Let's go back. Flick it off. Perfect. Excellent. Doing a bit of prep work for tomorrow. Get some of these lights ready. It's gonna be a good day. This is the under chassis LED kit. So I'm gonna have one at the front, one at the back, one down either side. I'm gonna be able to change the colors by remote control, also by sound. So when I turn the radio up, it will change according to the music I'm listening to. These can be set to flicker, flash, dim, be bright or just be a standard colour. Now these are LED strips, they're gonna go under the bonnet shining through the front grille. I've also got strips to go around the inner wheel arch. I've got rock lights which are these, they're gonna go under the arches themselves. Washing the underside in preparation to install the LED kit. Right guys, we're gonna replace these bulbs here. As you can see, that one's broken, that's knackered, that's never going to work. We're going to need to pull these out. Not a bit tight, a pair of pliers required for that one. We're going to pull these out, swap these out with new bulbs and put it back together. Right, let's get this pulled out. There we go. So these are the two different bulbs. This one is the original, this one is the new bulb. As you can see, there's no ridges on the side of this one, it's flat. But on this one, we have got ridges. They need to come off so they can go in. So we're going to cut these off and then it'll slide in. There we go, all ridges are taken off. Perfect, let's put them in. I know the colour of the bulbs don't match, but that doesn't matter. We're going to be installing halo ring lights at a later date. They're on order at the minute. When they come in, we'll put them in. There we go, all the lights are back working. That's what we need. Perfect, right, on to the next challenge. up underneath just to feed the cables up and through and then drag it round
Now we're just going to use some double sided sticky tape to hold these to the underside. We're going to give the area a good clean just to make sure the double sided tape sticks well. We don't want that coming off. There we go. Perfect. Now we'll we'll give it a wipe just to dry it off. We're gonna peel the tape back like so. That's a bit fiddly. Yep, they're working. Yep, they're on. Let's go up front. There we go. They're all working. There we go, guys. Fully complete. Rock lights under arches. Full LED underneath. That's most of the LED lights in. I've got a couple more to put in the front grill, the grill on the bonnet, and a couple more at the back. I'll be fitting them when they turn up. But what do you think? Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be installing halo lights at the front, and we're gonna be putting a light bar on the roof. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate all your time. Thank you.